If your kids are already whining about summer chores, just know you are in good company, Mom. Though no child naturally loves to clean, parents recognize chores are an important tool for teaching solid work ethics. So how can you get your child to want to help around the house? Author Connie Sokol knows this battle well. So if there is already a negative stigma, so to speak, around chores at your house, is it possible to flip that attitude or will it always be a tug of war? Yes, and I think it depends on the child too, but yes, and that comes back to the mom and the mom making a difference and saying, we're gonna do this differently and also ignoring the, the virtual whining and all of that, being able to just move forward and then create some different shifts in the way that you do things. There is an inevitable, inevitable argument that always pops up when we address this, this topic. Some parents believe in rewards, some parents do not, but regardless of how you feel about the incentive side of it, you say children need to know that doing chores is just part of being a family. Oh, absolutely. And I think, especially in this day and age where kids kind of run to this entitlement thing, it is so important that we as parents don't back down from that. I call it establishing the norm. We just have to let them know this is part of being a family mm -hmm. and there's no stickers that come with this. You know, you just go in and you do these five things and that's what you do. But And that's so helpful for them to realize, oh, things in life don't always come with a little extra reward for every single thing that I do because they kind of get that at school and in other places. So it's important that they establish that, that we establish that in the home. And a great way to do that is to make sure that those chores are done in a predictable way. So when they have that thing to count on, then they're not whining so much. They know this is just what we do. We get up, we do our chores, and then we can go play. And especially if you do that, you add that on to that sense of self uh, confidence and security because they know what's coming. I love um, Dr. Laura Markham. She's a clinical psychologist and she is the author of Happy Parent, um, Happy Kids. And she is fabulous, but she talks about predictable routines are so important for children. It gives them that self-confidence. It gives them a sense of security and it makes them feel like they know what's coming so that they can do it, get it done, and move on to something else. You also believe that chores should serve as almost a reality check, so to speak, to remind kids of how good they have yes. it. Yes, and I think it's so hard in this day and age where we have so much that we keep saying to our kids, I find myself saying, you don't know how you've got it, that, that you've got it, and I don't think that they do know. So it's a great thing, maybe have a family powwow and sit down and say, you know what? Dad and I were talking and we were thinking it'd be great to do a big family project like every day, Monday through Friday. Wouldn't that be great? And then the kids go, <laughs> And then you wait and then you say, but then we thought maybe be really responsible with your time and energy. Maybe we could just do it once a week. I don't know. What do you think? Give us your opinion. And then you get the buy-in because they go, oh, we could have had to do it every single day, those grody garage <laughs> boxes. But now we just do it once a week. Oh, that's great. So help them to understand and even give them experiences. I volunteered our boys to go and do a dairy farm thing on, you know, for a day where, the, you know, they go and they learn what it's really like. And then they come home and clean in the toilet doesn't look so bad. So it's a good thing to do. You can make that comparison for exactly. them. Exactly. A stanchion versus a toilet. Easy. <laughs> so, so if you're encouraging this to be a family effort, then this is just what we do as a family. Does the family then also need to help plan the chores? Absolutely. Like I mentioned, the buy-in. The more that you can get the kids to be a part of that buy-in, the less whining you're going to have. So sit down and brainstorm what are the chores. Instead of just shocking them every day with this is what you've got to do, be able to say, okay, we need to clean up the inside of the house. What do you think? And make a list, inside chores. And just have them brainstorm. And then you add on the ones you know that need to be done. Same thing with the outside. And then to not overwhelm yourself so that you outline every little thing, you can cluster the chores that need to be done. So inside would be daily chores and then bedrooms and then zones so that every day you're not saying 15 things. Mm -hmm. You just say one thing and they know, oh, it's the cluster chore. That's what I need to do. How do you recommend parents handle the reward system side of it? You know, there's a very the variety of ways to do it, but we found really good success with doing mini and max rewards. So like I said, not everything gets a sticker and some things just don't get anything, but we do some smaller rewards, maybe free things um, for them like maybe a specialty popsicle when they're done or if they've done a really good job or maybe we do a shake at the park and then you can do things that are a little bit more bigger ticket items or maybe places that you go as a family if we get these things done then we can go to this place but one thing we have found really works great is a summer fun box I love these <laughs> it so gets the buy-in but it's just you get dollar store items that they choose and then some bigger ticket ones that I got on sale and then this is for extra good behavior and extra good doing extra good attitude it's not for the regular little things and so once a week like on a Friday they get to choose something from the fun box and oh it keeps them going all day and of course this Look is at that stash. 12 is so fun and this <laughs> is like 12 and younger for sure but it really they will work for that decorative wall clock I mean they are so <laughs> excited so you it's get good four toilets you can, I was here with no whining <laughs> okay <laughs> love it well you posted this topic on your website and you received some really fun response can we share a couple absolutely from your readers uh, one mom posted that they have theme days that the kids look forward to like wild Wednesdays where they go on hikes and field trips and then they have Thinking Thursday, that's a trip to the library, and uh, Fun Friday, where they choose something that the kids choose to do within reason. That's a good idea. I loved them. 
and they shared so many neat things. I loved when women just posted all these ideas and how it affected them in the future. The one lady, I love this, she said my mom would create a list that included two long chores, several medium, and a few light. And then she says when my sister and I started college, we could actually function on our own as adults. I remember my sister going to college and saying her roommate didn't know how to boil water. Uh -oh. And I thought, this is this is uh -oh. what we're doing. Yeah. Instead of just letting loose in summer, we still can, but you can do just a little bit. It takes a short amount of time. Maybe an hour and a half every morning for our chores and then our power hour of reading, writing stuff. That's it. The rest of the day is play. Connie, thank you so much. We always love your parenting advice, but we also love your writing when it comes to fiction stories. You. you have this novel out, but I tell you what, I kicked back in the pedicure chair, soaked it up. It's a Yay. really, really fun read. It is on a special deal right now. It's Caribbean Crossroads, and today only it's $1.99 on ebook for a fun, clean, zingy, fun summer read. So it's great. It is. It's that clean romance that, yes. we, that we crave. Connie, thank you thank so you. much. All right.